Hi everybody. Today I'm taking a look at the Emacs Interceptor. It's a little FPV uh, car, as you can see here. And this is the ready to run kit that comes with the goggles and the transmitter and the car and a single battery. You charge it via micro USB and it's about $95. And there is a kit coming out without the goggles with just the car and the transmitter if you want to use your own goggles and that's going to be about $55. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on so you can see how the goggles look. When I did the uh, test drive on this I just used my Fat Shark goggles so I could record the DVR. So turn on the transmitter and oh the, by the way transmitter requires three uh, AAA batteries which you'll need to supply yourself. And the car has a switch on the bottom. So it should come already bound up. So there's that. Now let me plug in the goggles. So the goggles, uh, not a bad set of box goggles. These are way better than like say the uh, Ishin 005s that come with the novice one. These are a nice step above that. It comes with a 1S 18650 battery, which goes in the back strap and you also charge this with micro USB. It comes with one antenna but you can add another one if you'd like. And the picture's not too bad in here. It stretches out the 4x3 image but it's totally drivable as you can see there. Pretty good looking picture. So one thing I'm gonna point out here, I think I can probably show it, is that you can drive this thing at a really slow speed, which is great for um, driving around inside the house. Let's say, so you can drive it a well, so you can really just crawl it along and creep around. So that's good for indoors. Uh, one thing I would say with the handling, I wish the turning circle was a little bit better. The turning circle is a little bit big. And then when I show you the driving video, you'll, you'll see it's full speed and it's actually, it's quite low. It drives really slow, but it, it's appropriate for the uh, for doing FPV. Although you will, even though this kind of looks like uh, an off-road buggy, you really just want to drive this around on pretty smooth surfaces. There's not much suspension to speak of. You've got just the front, the plastic is the front suspension, so no real articulation there, it just flexes a little bit. And on the back, you do have a little bit of articulation left and right, but it's just a rigid axle and just little springs. Also in the back here, you can see there's the little brushed motor and the gearing system in there. No differential either, but still, it's easy to control. So let's take off, let me turn it off for right here. And then let's take the body off and take a look at that. Also, you can see a little trailing arm there. So this body just has these little plastic uh, pegs that go into little holes on this polycarbonate body. You could probably run it without the body as well if you wanted to. And then there's the third one in the front, which I will also remove. And there's the micro USB for charging. So you do have to remove partially the body, lift it up at least to get to the uh, charger in there. I wish there was a cutout in the body so you could just plug it in without taking off the body, but you do have to lift it up. There's a look at it, just everything's inside. And there's, you can see there's a, uh, they put a weight on the front here. So that shows they put some thought into it. Keep some weight over the front axle so the steering always has some uh, authority. And you can adjust the camera tilt a little bit in the angle as well, but my, I don't see why you would do that. And here's the FPV antenna in there receiver antenna and there's a button here so that you can manually change the uh, band and channel for your VTX if you want to match something that you have on let's say the rest of your FPV gear if you want to match it you can do it with that just through some long presses and let's take the bottom off I'll show you the battery base this is the screwdriver that it comes with world's biggest so see there is a screw on the bottom so either you're gonna to have to take the screw out to charge the battery up or you're gonna to have to remove the body to get to the micro USB, one or the other. I think it's probably easier just to lift the body up. I suppose you could cut something out here if you wanted to. But here's the battery bay, and here's the little, comes with a little 1S300, 3.7 volts. But you can see here this 450, which I have from my old Tiny Hawk, fits in there perfectly, so that'd be another option. If you're gonna run a bigger battery, a little 450 fits perfectly. Although I did notice on the battery that's included, there are a couple of little components here on the battery. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. I'm not sure what that's for. It might be some kind of low voltage protection to stop the battery from getting over discharged. Maybe, I'm not sure. So you might want to be aware of that if you're running an aftermarket battery that there might be something special in this one for safety, but just uh, just don't run it down too low. You can run it for about 15 minutes on this one, I would suspect. You probably run it for 20, 25 minutes on a big 450, surely longer than you'd feel like running at any one time. But there is no OSD, so no way to check the voltage as far as I can tell while you're driving it. So just keep an eye on it through the time and I'm sure it'll start to slow down. And through, if it's slowing down, you should definitely stop, stop driving it. So there's a uh, quick little look at the, the car. And like I said, it goes quite slowly, but when you're driving with the FPV, it's actually good. 
and it is like I said best on smooth surfaces you can run it on the rough tarmac and maybe some uh, it might drive over grass but I didn't try it but it'd be best on like a very smooth carpeted surface or maybe concrete floor or something like that but anyway let me just show you a quick uh, demo run that I did in a uh, parking lot while I was trying this out definitely a lot of fun to drive around and this would be a great first FPV experience for somebody instead of maybe jumping right into a, qu a quad you can maybe start with something like this and for people and then for people with more experience it's just uh, a little fun thing to have, different uh, perspective, drive around the house or anywhere you might find a smooth surface that you want to uh, explore around. So anyway, please uh, enjoy this uh, driving footage and uh, I'll see you the next one.